Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video we are going to be exploring an example of using the double integration method to calculate the deformations related to a beam. So let's look at the given information. Uh, we're being asked to use the double integration method to first derive the equation for the slope angle theta and the equation of the elastic curve, which we're going to call delta. And we're being asked to express these equations as a function of x. Then use these equations to compute the slope angle and deflection at the free end. We're also being given the modulus of elasticity the material of the material the beam is made out of is 29,000 KSI and the moment of inertia about the bending axis is given as 400 inches to the fourth. And I'm gonna go ahead and I forgot to give us a little, another piece of given information. The origin is point A and we're taking um, a positive X variable as pointing to the right, okay? So um, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is, uh, what I like to do at least, is write the general uh, overarching governing equations that we would need to uh, utilize to um, get this slope angle and deflection formula. So if you watch the previous video, we know that EI times theta as a function of X is equal to the single integral of the moment function with respect to X. And then uh, if we say EI times delta as a function of X, that's equal to the double integral of m as a function of x dx, or this could be written as the single integral of theta as a function of x dx. So this is basically um, the overarching um, system or, or formulation to utilize the double integration method. Now, the next thing I like to do before I really get into the weeds of the calculations is to identify my boundary conditions or continuity conditions, uh, depending on what I have. So if you notice here, we have this cantilever beam, right? We have a cantilever beam that's loaded with 50 pounds per linear foot over its 12 foot span. And we have the fixed connection at A, and of course point B is the free connection. So if we sketch what this uh, deflected shape is gonna look like, basically what we're gonna have is a little taper here at A, and then it um, curves downward or con concave down like this. So this value right here, this is uh, delta maximum, which is the deflection at point B. And if we wanted to put a tangent line right here at point B, then we can project a horizontal line here. And then this slope is our slope angle theta at point B. So what we are first actually being asked to calculate is uh, the slope angle and the deflection as a function of X. So we wanna get mathematical functions that model that deformation, um, whether it's the slope angle or, or the deflection along the length of the beam, okay? And then at the free end at point B, we have delta max and we also have theta B, which is also gonna be the maximum rotation angle, which is what the other part of the question asked for. So um, in terms of boundary conditions, we wanna pay attention to what's happening at this fixed connection. At the fixed connection, which is where X equals zero, the following holds true. So we're gonna say our boundary conditions are at X equals zero, theta equals zero, also at x equals zero, the deflection delta is equal to zero. And then we see that there's kind of a, a taper here and it eventually becomes, very quickly becomes non-zero, okay? And this again is a non-linear, it's a, it's a curved uh, deflected shape, okay? So um, what do we need? Well, we need the internal moment function in this beam, and we're gonna do that by, we're gonna obtain that by first calculating the external reaction. So hopefully you remember from your, your basic statics that if we calculate these external reactions, we're gonna get um, an AY that equals 0.6 kips, and we're gonna get a moment reaction MA of 3.6 kip feet, 
and then the horizontal reaction is zero. Now, again, I just skipped my basic statics steps. Hopefully you're very comfortable with that. If um, you need to show some work to get these, that's okay. You just sum forces in the y direction on this entire beam to get a y, and then you sum moments about the fixed connection for the entire beam, and you get m a. But I'm gonna skip that step since uh, hopefully you, everyone's comfortable with with that basic statics. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, draw my beam segment with my uniform load here. And instead of 50 PLF, if you're okay with it, I'm gonna write this as 0.05 KLF, just so I'm working uh, in terms of kips. And then I'm gonna draw this with making a cut here at a distance X. And so I'm using a method of sections operation here. So this is my method of sections free body diagram. I'm gonna have a shear force as a function of X and I'm gonna have my internal moment as a function of X. Um, I'm not interested in my shear force. Remember, we're only interested in this moment functions and in, in this moment function for, for our application. So by method of sections, I abbreviate MOS as method of sections, I'm going to get the following moment function. M as a function of X is going to equal minus 0.025, and that's going to carry units of KLF times X squared plus 0.6 kips times X minus 3.6 kip feet. And again, I skipped a couple of uh, intermediate steps here because hopefully um, we're, we're comfortable with our method of sections operations. Method of sections and then solving for external reactions is really a statics step. And this, is, uh, this video is more mechanics and materials or structural analysis. So hopefully we are uh, a little bit beyond having to, um, me having to show all my work to get this. But if you need to stop and pause and do your side calculations to get this internal moment moment, please feel free to do so. Okay. So moving on, um, I am ready to calculate my first integral, which will enable me to get EI times theta as a function of X. So that's going to be the integral of that moment function with respect to X. And I'm going to say integral of uh, negative 0.025 X squared plus 0.6 X minus 3.6 dx. Uh, that's a fairly simple integral. That's just a polynomial function. So we raise each term a power and divide by the new power. And so we should get negative 0.008333 x cubed plus 0.3 x squared minus 3.6 x plus your first integration constant k1 okay so um, this is our first part of what will eventually be our answer the next thing we're going to do is take an integral again i'm going to say ei times delta as a function of x is the double integral of m as a function of x dx which is really just the single integral of theta as a function of x dx. And so what we are going to do here is just integrate this function that we just got. Okay. So integrating the function that we just obtained will give us EI delta X equals negative 0 0.002083 X to the fourth plus 0 0.1 X cubed minus 1.8x squared plus k1x plus k2. So be very careful. We have a second integration constant that has come out of this second integral. Now what we can do is apply our boundary conditions, apply boundary conditions to solve for k1 and k2. Two, okay, so our first boundary condition was theta equals zero at x equals zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our theta function and we're going to say uh, zero 
in for theta and we're gonna plug in zero for our x values and we'll solve for k1. Hopefully you can just see this and you'll be able to clearly see that k1 is zero, but I'm gonna show my work for this uh, line right here just to make sure we all are getting the same thing. So EI times zero equals negative 0 0.008333 cubed plus 0 0.30 squared minus 3.6 times zero plus K1. Doing some very simple algebra, K1 equals zero. And then similarly, we're gonna say delta equals zero at x equals zero. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into, uh, this is supposed to be uh, delta as a function of x, but we're gonna go into our delta uh, as a function of x equation, substitute in zero for delta and zero in for all these x values. And then clearly we will see that k2 also is zero. Again, if you need to pause the video and show your work on your own paper, please do so. So finally, um, our functions are gonna be summarized as the following. Theta as a function of x is one over EI times negative 0 0.008333 x cubed plus 0 0.3 x squared minus 3.6 x. That's one of my answers. And then delta as a function of x equals one over EI, open parentheses, minus 0 0.002083 x to the fourth, plus 0 0.1 x cubed minus 1.8 x squared, okay? And so this is uh, the first part of my answer, right? And these are functions, these are mathematical functions. Uh, the first one models the variation of the slope angle throughout the length of the beam, and the second models the variation of the deflection throughout the length of the beam. The last part of the problem said, compute the slope angle and the deflection at the free end, which was point B in our original figure. So we're going to say theta sub B equals theta when X equals what? Well, it's when X equals 12 feet, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in 12 feet in for each of these X values. Now, here's what you gotta do. You have to be very, very careful with your units, all right? It all goes back to units. I see people in my classes make mistakes all the time because they misappropriate units, all right? So let's remind ourselves what our units were. Well, in when we solved for the external reactions, and um, we were dealing with uh, our early calculations in this example, we were dealing with kips and feet, right? We have 3.6 kip feet as my moment reaction. We've got kips in my reaction here for AY, and then the uniform load was 0.05 kips per foot, KLF. So everything is in terms of kips and feet. Now, if you notice, E and I were given in terms of kips and inches, all right? So we gotta convert something. So coming back down to my current step, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and write um, also delta B equals delta when X equals 12 feet. But we gotta mind our units, okay? So be very careful here. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say E times I equals 29,000 KSI times 400 inches to the fourth. And when I crank this through, I get uh, this big number. I get uh, 11,600,000 kips times inches squared. And if you remember this term right here is called flexural rigidity. The product of E and I is called flexural rigidity. And when you multiply them together, you have kips per square inch times inches to the fourth gives you kips times inches squared. Now I'm gonna convert that uh, to, turn to units of kips feet squared. So I'm gonna say times one foot over 12 inches and I'm gonna square that. So basically I'm just dividing by 144 and I'm gonna get 80,555.6 kips times 
feet squared. Now my EI value has the same units that all of these coefficients in my functions have, okay? So remember, we developed these, these functions based on units of kips and feet. And even if you want to, you can keep or, or retain the units inside of each of these functions, okay, of each of these constants. So if you wanted to, or if we wanted to, we could have continued to um, maintain feet and uh, kip units built into all these all these constants. I left them out just to uh, keep the, the video from looking too cluttered. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute 12 feet in for x, and we're gonna substitute that EI value into these denominators, and we're gonna get the following. We're gonna get uh, theta at point B is gonna be equal to negative 0.0001788, and this will carry units of radians. It's a, it's a angular rotation along the length of the beam at point B, so it has units of radians, and again, if you maintained all your units, then you would see you would actually get units uh, that cancel each other out. You'll get the same units in the numerator as you do in the denominator, and they'll cancel each other out, which for an angle, it means you have um, units of radians. And then similarly, we're going to have a delta B equals minus 0 0.001608. Feet. Now, what do these minus uh, signs indicate? Well, what they indicate is the direction of rotation. So this is just 0 0.0001788 radians, and this is going to be rotating in a clockwise fashion. And then if I want to convert this, um, this deflection to feet, I can do that. Uh, so I'm going to punch this in my calculator, multiply by 12, and I'll get 0. 0, 0.019304, uh, I said feet, I mean inches. It, it is in feet right now, but convert it to inches. So inches, and that's gonna deflect downward. And if you recall from um, our previous video in this playlist, uh, we talk about the sign convention for the double integration method, counterclockwise and up is positive. So if you pop out a negative value, that's gonna give you a clockwise rotation and a downward deflection. Let's make sure we can visualize this and that this makes sense. I'm gonna redraw this beam and I'm gonna try to draw it a little bit bigger so um, we can kind of visualize what's happening. So this was the 12 feet and this was you know, 0.05 KLF. So this beam deflected kind of like this with a taper at the fixed end. So this deflection right here, that is the 0 0.019304 inches. And then that rotation angle uh, comes from if we put a tangent line at this free end and we have a horizontal reference axis right here, then um, we see that This is our rotation angle. Oops, didn't mean to scroll there. Theta, okay? And, you know, by properties of uh, vertical angles from geometry, this is also theta over here. But um, this is the rotation angle going, going uh, clockwise that we would expect. So that's the theta equals 0 0.0001788 radians. So again, um, hopefully this video was helpful to you. I did skip several of the statics steps earlier. Uh, for example, I did not show all my work in calculating the external reactions or the internal moment function. I only did that uh, to kind of save us some computational time. I do have other videos in on my channel that illustrate and, and remind us of how to calculate external support reactions and internal uh, functions like the moment function. So if you're a little rusty on that, please see my other videos on internal loads and uh, calculating support reactions. Again, thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please hit like and subscribe.